This week on To the Contrary. First, predicting the power of the women's vote. Then, Brett Kavanaugh takes his seat on the Supreme Court as both sides gear up to battle over Roe versus Wade. Behind the headlines, body positivity. We talk to Kara Richardson-Whiteley about the weight of being. Bonnie welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. Up first, women in the midterms. Once again, women voters are the focal point as early voting gets underway. Many analysts predict the upcoming midterm elections and control of the House of Representatives will depend on women's turnout. Democratic women tell pollsters they will be voting in historic proportions. Much of the expected surge is being fueled by the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. A CNN poll shows a 30-point gender gap going into the midterms. Nearly two-thirds of registered women voters said they're more likely to vote for a Democrat. A third say they're more likely to vote Republican. Among men, 50% are more likely to vote Republican and 45% Democratic. And a Politico morning consult poll found more than three out of four Democrats say they're very motivated to vote in November versus 68% of Republicans. Taylor Swift, as it turns out, is a rock star not only in the music business, but also in getting young people to register to vote. BuzzFeed News reports, after the artist expressed her support for two Democrats and encouraged her 112 million Instagram followers to register to vote, 65,000 people registered in a 24-hour period. So, Eleanor, we are now uh, three weeks out from the elections. Uh, Do you predict more Republican or more Democratic women will be motivated to go to the polls and vote? Bonnie, women mostly Democratic women, have been surging since the day Trump took office. On November the 6th, they're about to go over the top. I'll agree with that. The Women's March certainly energized, and I've seen it sustained. But I think Republican women, women who supported Judge Kavanaugh, now Justice Kavanaugh, they're stomping mad, too, just like the women on the left. So I think we're going to see a surge in both parties of women turning out. After the Kavanaugh um, testimony and everything recently, the only thing keeping me hanging on is this hope that women are just going to storm the polls. Otherwise, I think I'm just going to go into a hole. (laughs) I think we need to remember, too, that the point spread is even wider the younger you go. So women under 35 lean blue far more heavily than women than women over 35. And it's because of Donald Trump. But will they turn, especially young women, Will they turn out? That's always the question. I mean, there was all all this talk when Obama first ran for president of young people turning out like crazy. The the exit polls showed differently. Um, what's, What's the biggest motivating factor? Is it Kavanaugh or is it Trump? And which women, red or blue, will respond to it? Histor- it's true that historically, um, a- the 18 to 35s vote in the midterms at what, like a 20 percent rate. It's pretty pathetic. Um, and so, if that changed this year, it would be because of Trump and Kavanaugh, and it would be a big deal if it changed. Yeah, th- this this is really this could be a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. These millennials sh- could break through their age group or the age group of those who came before them. And I, I-, I think there are two factors. I think Trump has been waking them up all of this time. But you're talking about sexual harassment in the case of Kavanaugh, sexual assault. You're really talking to the youngest women. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me they feel that uh, that pressure even more. And if you look at at campus life and and how these issues are surging among uh, young women, I think Kavanaugh has done them a, quote, favor. Do you think you'll be in the majority in the House of Representatives, meaning Democrats taking it back uh, after November 6th? Almost for sure. If with 23 seats to go and we have maybe triple that that are available to us, it seems to me we'll get back the, the House for sure. The Senate seemed more problematic, but I think that what we're seeing already, Bonnie, is that the bump 
that Kavanaugh gave the Republican is fading away, and Democrats are once again showing a surge. And I believe that we'll begin to see that in the Senate. It'll take longer time. It's a much harder House. It's a much closer House. But watch the Senate and don't write the Senate off. Well, isn't it harder? You're, you're a political consultant. Yeah. Isn't it harder to um, say to people, well, we won, now get out and vote, mm -hmm. than it is to say, you know, we lost. You guys yeah. have, you know, have been hanging back and you can't hang back anymore, you're going to start losing your rights. Yeah, traditionally, uh, midterms are a referendum on the party in power. That's, I mean, we've known that for a long time, but this is different because we're in the era of Trump with these rallies that are incessant. I mean, they are there are so many rallies and he gets that bully pulpit, he gets that, uh, you know, soapbox to stand on and, and, and essentially spread some mistruths and falsehoods and, and fill his base with the worry that the Democrats are coming for you. They're actually endangering your way of life. Look at what they did to this innocent man. Man. That is Trump. Is that is just Trump's playbook right now, and he's going to run it ragged for but these next twenty some days. Are Republican women any? They are responding. A, a, any much more sensitive to um, having been uh, sexually accosted or assaulted or raped, even uh, you know. than than uh, did, so they they felt for Kavanaugh during the hearings, and they didn't feel for. Um, Dr. Blasey Ford. Hmm. Why is that? Okay, so to your question about Dr. Blasey Ford and their empathy for her, from what I heard from Republican women in the aftermath, it was very much the Susan Collins answer. When I heard her give it on a Sunday show, I was not at all surprised because that was the exact line that a number of my very highly educated <laughs> Republican friends who grew up in sort of the elitist mid-Atlantic areas have given me. And I was sort of, I pushed back and said, well, and, and they even sort of went a little further and said, didn't she look a little unhinged to you? I said, well, she's sitting in front of all these cameras. I think any of us would be unhinged, you know? But what I heard was essentially that we believe her, we just don't believe it was Brett Kavanaugh who did it to her, Can right? I say something? That <laughs> doesn't do. make any sense. That doesn't, that is so offensive. And Susan Collins mm. saying that and Republican women saying that too, because you're essentially saying, I believe you, but I don't believe you because yeah. Dr. Ford said, I'm 100% sure. And usually- Did the she make... look unhinged to you? No, that is so offensive. Can we talk about who looked unhinged and hysterical and emotional and threw a tantrum? <laughs> Yeah, Brett Kavanaugh, definitely had if a element, woman you know. had behaved like that, forget a woman of color, if a woman had behaved like that, I don't even know. And by the way, this, was, this wasn't a criminal trial. This was an interview for a job promotion. I mean, unbelievable. So to your point about criminal trial, right, that's what the right is doing. The right and the left, I've seen it on both sides, but the right especially has used things like due process and, and saying but that they didn't he was allow denied that, that right? But, but if, you, if you speak to some Real. legal minds who have, you know, kind of been down this road, they're saying if you really want to get legal about it, and I'm sure you could weigh in with your, your legal experience, but her testimony, essentially, her, her I guess the, the word she gave to in, in in that private meeting she had with a, a counselor or a marriage counselor it was some many years ago saying it was Brett Kavanaugh that assaulted her that could be a, yeah. a, 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 taken as evidence if yeah. this were a court of law yeah. but it wasn't so it, this what, is, but, but rather, rather than rehashing though no. um, uh, and I want to bring Alice in here uh, blue wave or red wave of women in November I, I think just the fact that women do favor Democrats this year suggests that that the 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 pink wave is blue. I guess. <laughs> but that also, makes it purple. Yeah. <laughs> good point. Good point. Well, not not purple in the sense that we usually use it. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, I think I think though that that as you were saying, there's a real chance that the Kavanaugh confirmation kerfuffle could kind of puncture the pink wave at least in that the Republican base was energized not just because they you know really think he's right but they saw why they didn't like Democrats in the first place. Yes, that, you know that, I will that, agree with that. that. I feel like this whole like Democrats are so emotional and whatever you say about Trump he's such a good messenger and his sound bites are so good and I feel like Well let me tell you really about being a good up. messenger. <laughs> about the worst message you could send if you're a Republican, and this is his message, Trump is on the ballot. He keeps saying he is on the ballot. Right. If you think that doesn't rear up women to say, oh, really, I forgot that for a moment. <laughs> and, 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 and particularly this notion of, of, of comes down to credibility. Yeah. Yes. When the woman says, on a question of assault, I'm 100% sure who mm -hmm. assaulted me, I ask you, you can forget a lot of things. We mm -hmm. forget yeah, who forget. assaulted you. And when she comes down to having a polygraph, which is unnecessary and often unreliable to take the risk 
of having a polygraph, when it comes down to being treated mm -hmm. for an assault that went on some years ago, which is in her favor, because it lasts so long. Mm -hmm. On a question of credibility, I would ask the average person to say to Susan Collins, what would it take yeah, for would. such a woman to be credible to you? And I tell you, mm -hmm. if this woman is not credible, watch out women yeah, watch of out America. Women. Nobody will have that no, kind of evidence or very few people. And this is why women don't come forth, by the way. Precisely. <laughs> All right, let us know what you think. Please follow me on Twitter, at Bonnie Bay, from the voting booths to the Supreme Court. Brett Kavanaugh took his seat on the Supreme Court this week. The new justice also hired four female law clerks, which is a first for the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, with a court that is majority conservative, anti-abortion, and pro-choice activists are gearing up for the possibility that the court might overturn Roe v. Wade. That's, of course, the case that established a nationwide right to abortion. Activists also want to see if the court upholds state laws that restrict abortions. Meanwhile, Planned Parenthood announced a multi-million dollar plan called Care for All to protect access to abortion. It will expand services at clinics in states where abortion is likely to remain legal and offer women support to travel to those clinics. Planned Parenthood also says it will work to destigmatize abortion and fight for pro-choice legislation. Abortion rights activists believe there are 13 abortion-related cases that could find their way to the Supreme Court. I covered the Supreme Court for nine years in the late 90s, and it used to be the theory among reporters, and even in talking to the justices whom we had limited access to, um, that they would never overturn Roe. If, if the Republicans got a majority, they would never throw out Roe v. Wade. They would just punch so many holes in it sure. that it was as good as dead. But now, with this court, do you believe they will just flat out overturn Roe? Because the, it's a whole different set of... I mean, with, with two appointees by this president... Yeah. Um, it's a whole different ballgame. It's fair to think that, it, yeah, it's a whole different ballgame, but I really don't think it is. If we know this town, it's sometimes very much business as usual. And I think Justice Kavanaugh, the newest seated uh, justice, I don't think he's going to do it. I'm with Lisa Murkowski. She and Susan Collins feel that he's not going to do it. There's just evidence in his background that just says that he's not the type. And I, I'm going to leave it right there. I mean, he's 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 got a mixed bag of opinions, but I, I really do think that he sees it as precedent, and he doesn't want to overturn that. That's not what he said, though. He said well, different he things. Was, he said he different things. He hasn't said he would have wanted to overturn it. He, he, he's, 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 he, there's, there's one of his decisions that uh, must upset anyone in, in, the, in the Roe case where, where even a Texas court had found that a juvenile could have an abortion, and he tried to delay that abortion. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to keep it, in his view, from happening at all. Mm -hmm. But that may show the way he's going to respond as an incrementalist, knowing that if you do what the court has been doing now all along, which is eating away at Roe, and if jo John Roberts, uh, and watch John Roberts, uh, wants to keep the court a stable institution, wants to rescue mm -hmm. it from what happened to the court, whose bona fides has gone Well, that's the down, one thing a, a that, lot of lawyers are hanging on to. Mm -hmm, that yeah. He's looking at his legacy, clearly. His legacy with the and gay, the stability. With the gay, gay marriage decision, for example, being the lead author on that decision. Um, he... And swinging the court with his vote. And he's not a swing. He's not a swing justice. But he is the justice, the mm -hmm. chief justice. And you have a court that is on the brink, if it hasn't already lost credibility the way the House and the Senate have done, and you want to hold on to this institution as above the fray. Now, do you think uh, Planned Parenthood is giving up too much by saying they'll only they'll they'll mainly concentrate on eighteen or twenty states? I don't. But you know what? I also think I don't. You don't think they're giving up on no abortion as a national. No, no, right? no, 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 no. Of course not. I don't think Planned Parenthood would ever do that. But I actually also think I'm not really worried. After seeing what everything that happened with the Kavanaugh hearing, 
I'm not worried so much about Roe being overturned. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm more worried about the message this has given generations of women and girls. What his entire hearing showed us. This is why you don't come forward. You will not be rewarded. Your life will be destroyed. And the man is going to go on to have a promotion. So I feel like he's forever going to represent that for me. I mean, I always explain the news to my daughter because I'm on it and, you know, I, I talk about it. But with this story, I really kept it away because I didn't want that idea to even enter her head that if you come forward, not only will people not believe you, the president of the United States could mock you at a rally. Your thoughts on uh, which direction the court's going to go in and the Kavanaugh influence? I think, so I think, I, frankly, Susan Collins had it right when she said that, that the Planned Parenthood and Democrats said the same thing about O'Connor and Kennedy, that women would die. When really, as, as you knew then um, and as we know now, it's likeliest, as legal experts know now, I guess, it's likeliest to have the same um, restrictions coming instead of a full overturn. Mm -hmm. and but that's, that's not what I want. hear now. That's not what I hear from... from uh, uh, my husband has argued a case before the Supreme, Supreme Court, which he won, by the way, nine to zero, <laughs> about four years ago, and um, he's in with a bunch of criminal defense lawyers, and that's not what they're thinking. They're thinking that Kavanaugh is just going to be the vote unless Robert switches for his legacy's yeah. sake yeah. Um, and just say, let's get rid of it. I mean, he was so blatantly political in his testimony yeah. to cite the Clinton <gasps> as a, I mean, that, that was, was crazy. over the top. Yeah. What, co what conservatives want from an overturn or from more restrictions has always been not to abolish abortion, but to let the states legislate it. And so restrictions on abortion coming from the Supreme Court absent an overturn of Roe frankly have the same effect at the state level anyway. And so I think... That hasn't been the conservative one, position one, at all. One, they one, want to abolish it. That's a kind of fallback. Okay, but one <laughs> quick question to you, Eleanor. Um, the wave, one thing that's supposed to be happening with this supposed blue wave is that a, num a, a lot of state legislatures are going to go blue. Um, therefore, uh, these... Uh, you know, very difficult anti-abortion laws that, like, Texas has come up with, which got thrown out, but telling the clinics they had to be built mm -hmm. to hospital standards, so zoning standards, all kinds of things mm -hmm. to put difficult. clinics out of business. That those, that with s state legislatures that are democratic, those problems for Planned Parenthood will go away. Well, that, that's maybe the most important point you can make, Bonnie, that the corrections at the state level could take place now uh, because those corrections are there because the Supreme Court hasn't accepted any of that. So it's left in place all kinds of horrific inroads. I mean, a heartbeat of a fetus and you can't have an abortion. So those women have already had to go to other states. So I do think that the Democratic wave in the states will be the first you will, will feel and that the court will come much later. All right. Behind the headlines, more than 30 million people in the U.S. currently suffer from eating disorders. The most common eating disorder characterized by recurrent episodes of eating large amounts of food is also the newest being recognized by psychiatrists. Binge eating disorder is the most common eating disorder. It's the least talked about. It's the newest eating disorder diagnosis in the DSM-5, and yet it is two and a half times more prevalent than anorexic, anorexia and bulimia combined. In The Weight of Being, Kara Richardson-Whiteley writes about the struggle she's faced since childhood about her disorder and how her peers responded to her because of her weight. I have lived an entire life of fat shaming. I've been bullied as a kid. I've been, you know, I've actually, in Weight of Being, I talk about even being shot um, with a BB gun by teenagers in my neighborhood just because I'm taking a walk. I was a target. But it wasn't until she was a mother that she faced the issues straight on. She decided she needed to make drastic changes to save herself and her family. It starts in this moment where I'm at the doctor's office with my daughter and I um, notice that my daughter's weight is veering dangerously close to the overweight zone. And I fear that I'm the person who makes that happen. And so instead of just 
you know, pointing the finger at my kids, I point the finger inward at myself and look at the things that I could do to make change in my family. Some of Richardson Whiteley's steps were small, such as starting a community garden plot and starting to hike. Others were more complicated, such as having stomach surgery and going to a mental health professional who specialized in binge eating disorder. And I struggled with weight. I also struggled with a lot of self-worth and knowing that there was something beyond just a diet plan to deal with what I was going through. I made a deal with myself that if I was going to have bariatric surgery, that I was also going to take the therapy, you know, eating disorder therapy, as seriously as I would the surgical process. Although binge eating disorder has received more attention recently, experts say little seems to be done to prevent children and adults from developing negative relationships with food. One problem is so-called food deserts, where people living in poor communities don't have access to healthy food. We as a nation struggle with food deserts and issues of income inequality and being able to even find the right kinds of food to help one feel healthy and whole and nourished. I hope that we start to change that through different programs to allow food to enter in those areas where it's hard to find fresh fruits and vegetables because for me personally, that has been really a part of my own success. To combat fat shaming, activists have launched the body positivity movement, which says people of all body types should be accepted and appreciated. Richardson Whiteley says she supports the movement, but adds sometimes learning to love yourself means getting the help you need. The difference, I think, in the body positivity movement is knowing when you're well and when you're sick. Body positivity for me meant that I had the courage and the self-worth to ask for help. So uh, the body positivity movement, is, the, is it the right track to uh, allow, uh, let's, let's face it, it's mainly women. Mm -hmm. um, you know, more women are poor, more women are obese than men. Um, is, is it right to say you look beautiful or should, should you say, Make sure you're healthy and, yeah. you know, get, go to a doctor, get checked, see what your vital uh, organ, what, you know, how you're doing and work to make your health the main point? Yeah, I totally think so. But it's so hard for women, not only because what everyone's telling us, but after you become a mother and then you have one kid, then you have another kid, you know, we always talk about this. And it's it's so funny because I, I was thinking to myself the other day what I really want to look like, and I want to have the body back when I was 20, but now I'm almost 40 and I have two kids and I could, that's just not realistic. So it's so funny. I was thinking that with all the health complications I had after becoming a mom, I'm so lucky to have my health. Why am I thinking about that waste I had when I I, my body has done such amazing things since, so definitely health. I think and we see this, too, a little bit in the private sector and the diet industry, yeah. that the, the, the pivot from appearance to wellness. Weight Watchers <laughs> just changed its name for a reason. <laughs> and I think that's, and, and, and yeah, I mean, it's commercial, obviously, but that's it's in right. response to the way the culture is shifting, and, and I think it's right that the culture is shifting that way. Yeah, the bigger this knife image of woman slim is a lot to overcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is a movement that has to grow, and it's got to be led by women. Women, yeah. And if they get out in front with it, uh, they can it, it succeed. But look for that to take, given but, Hollywood and TV yeah. years. But what about body shaming? I mean, um, does that? Uh, I obviously that needs to go, but it's pretty much a part of our culture. And, and uh, again, as long as the image of who you should be mm -hmm. is that slimmer than slim, body shaming comes with it. Well, the, then, the, then we have to get the the uh, fashion industry in on this yeah, because they're the ones who, who show <laughs> who show women who look like you know hangers. Yeah. Well, forget uh, that. Look forget at Beyonce that. out there. Look at Cardi B. I mean, look at Taylor Swift. Even all these women have millions. Uh, Kim Kardashian, number one. I mean, these people have so many resources, financial, to make their bodies look 
just the way they want. And Kim Kardashian being primarily that, I mean, she has invested so much into having that perfect, what she thinks is a perfect physique. And millions of women think it's perfect too. I, people like myself, we're 35 and moms are too. We aspire for that. Why? Because it's been thrown in our faces for years since we were kids growing up in small town rural America. Which and look at glamour. It's been you know? thrown in your face that you should be thin or you could, or Everything Kim Kardashian make your body is a not certain thin. way. Make your body a certain way, whether it was thin back in the 90s mm -hmm. or have it be curvy and, and perfect yeah. right now. Go get some, you know, whatever the latest treatment is. We got it. That kind of thing. It's, it's a shame. Thank you all. That's it for this edition. Please follow me on Twitter and visit our website, pbs.org slash to the contrary. And whether you agree or think to the contrary, see you next week. Yeah, so no, I think it's like we said so much.